some Cedrian shenanigans, and welcome to my tour of the North Western Railway. If you follow this map, you will soon find out how I have laid out my take on the ever-famous island of Sogor. But before we can get to the Northwestern Railway that we all know and love, let us begin with the early days. The ever infamous railway that bit off more than it could ever hope to chew, the Sodor and Mainland starts our journey. We begin at the main terminus of the line, Kirk Ronan. Moving north, we arrive at Rolf's Castle, and soon after, Kelsthorpe Road. Following this, we arrive at a large interchange, which we'll get to in a moment. Moving just west, we arrive at the glorious Crovens Gate, the terminus for the Scalloway Railway. The line splits in two here, with the southern line heading to Balahu. The northern line doesn't connect to anything, but these two rejoin near the infamous Balahu Ridge. The tunnel that the SNM had founded just never worked and collapsed several times during its construction. Returning to the interchange southwest of Crovens Gate, if you move south on this, the line follows the old railroad plateway and connects to the wharf at Ballad Rail. Heading up this line, we meet up with the Scarlowie at Crosnai Curran, and the line terminates at Great Waterton, the largest city of Sodor, at the time at least. We'll cover its history in the modern era. And that's all for the Sodor and Mainland, but it's far from the only railway of this time. Up next is the Wellsworth and Suttery Railway. There isn't much different from the official Andre lore, but it is worth mentioning regardless. The first tracks were laid at Crosby, heading eastward. Following this, we arrive at Wellsworth, with a monstrous hill just beyond. The line thusly deviates south towards the town of Suttery, with a small harbour near the settlement. Unfortunately, this harbour proved to be quite unsustainable, so the line continued, eventually terminating at the port city of Brendam. Coming next, the Tidmouth Knapford and Ellsbridge Light Railway. This has a few differences, but like the WNS, it is mostly straightforward and consistent with Andre Law. The line originates at Knapford, with two options of travel. We'll take the main line, bringing us to Dryall. The line continues to Tory Wreck, where it splits heading back to Dryall, not quite making it. Moving along, it terminates at Ellsbridge, next to the picturesque River Ells. Heading back to Nefford, going north, we arrive at Tidmouth, the site of another quite problematic harbour. The line then extends to Hackenwick, where it comes to an inexplicable stop in the hills. Ah, the ever picturesque mid Sodor Railway. A lovely railway with big ambitions. It is exactly the same as Andre's vision, but let's touch on it for completionist's sake. The line began at Arlesburg West and climbed up to Farquhar Road. Here, the railway split south to a mine. Moving north, after another junction to a separate mine, the railway passed through Marthwaite and Arlesdale Green. Personally speaking, the latter station is where I place the sheds. A large mining network surrounds the town of Arlesdale as the line moves into the mountain. and passes yet another mine at Casney Howen, spiraling through the many passes to Ulfstead Road. 
the line slowly descends from here, passing Balamadi before terminating at King Ori's Bridge and Peel Godred beyond. I have mixed opinions on the Coldyfell Mountain Railway, and as you can see when we eventually get to the modern era, it was not long for this world. The line was mostly funded as by the Midsoto Railway Company exclusively as the tourist line. It was laid down at Kirkmashan during a period of expansion in the 1890s. Had things gone right, the MSR would have connected here as well. The railway slowly ascended to Shiloh, making its way around a high mountain lake and arriving at Scarlowy Road. Here, in 1900, disaster would strike, as the number one, Godred, toppled to his death, bringing the end of the railway and the MSR's grand plans. The line continued to a treacherous climb, aptly named Devil's Back, eventually arriving at the summit of Coldy Fell. Following Godred's accident, and the continued absence of numbers two and three, only number four, Coldy, remained, alone in a shed for decades. But this was far from the only railway to suffer a great loss. Not much is known of the enigmatic Hawin Valley Railway, and not even its engines made any sense. Tracks were laid from Abbey in 1856, following a rather unusual week at the Standing Stones of Kildane, where- <laughs> The line weaved up into the mountains to the settlement of Shen Fen. Moving south, the line briefly served the slate quarry of Ward Fell. Moving north from, from Shen, it, it reached Shane Duini, then eventually arriving at Haven Lake. What would happen at that lake would stump historians for decades, and even still, it is not fully known. All that we do know is The Misty Island Logging Railroad was quite an oddball of a railway. It's an equal enigma, though it has no horrible history, just confusing residents. The line technically begins at the port of Brendam, shooting off into a long tunnel under the sea. On the Lentil Island, the railway truly begins at Fakisa Lowy. It loops around the island, reaching Renskar, with a logging camp nearby. On the other side of the island, Madari Farke overlooks an inlet where the three engines, now four, reside. And that is all for the railways of yesteryear, but we have several to touch on in the more familiar days. Skipping forward a few decades, we have the North Western Railway. Established in 1915, the North Western Main Line begins at Tidmouth. The engines sleep here when off duty. Moving south, the Main Line passes through Napford Junction and into a large tunnel. Exiting this, the main line runs by Crosby up to Wellsworth, where the infamous Gordon's Hill awaits just beyond. Once you get over this obstacle, Marin awaits with Cronk beyond that. Moving east, Kildane and its many industries stand at wait. The line is empty for a while, speeding through the Sudrian countryside until it eventually reaches S&M trackage with Kelsthorpe Road. 
The railway continues east towards the bustling Crovens Gate, where engine facilities stand. Just beyond, the Norbury Branch Junction awaits, but the main line moves north. Reaching the Valahoo Ridge and Henry's Tunnel, the railway finally reconnects with its branch and races along towards Vickerstown, where it terminates. Backtracking east, the Normandy branch line diverges at the Ballahoo Ridge, moving south. Here, it re it connects to Ballahoo, where it splits once more. Moving west, it reconnects the branch to the main line at Crovens Gate. But going southeast, you arrive at yet another junction. Moving east from Ballahoo, you arrive at Normandy. Until 1970, this was run by engines of the LMS, and eventually British Rail. But it is now home to several engines of the Northwestern. Going south, you arrive at some new developments. First, the town of South Normby, a seaside home. Very quaint. Further along, you reach Casney Norin, a summer holiday location like no other, with serene and shallow seas all around. Finally, beyond this, Eagles Point, a strategic harbor developed for old Sadrian conflicts, finally stolen back from the roads in 1990. Built along the old railroad plateway and the S&M, the Great Waterton branch line is one of the newest to the island's network, but is still very important. Technically speaking, the line begins at Crovens Gate, but its terminus is Ballad Vale, a wharf serviced by both the Scarlowy and Northwestern stands here, with exports of slate. Moving north, the branch line connects at Cosney Curran, where Duncan won St. Thomas on a fool's errand and almost got him killed in a bridge collapse. Almost directly east is Great Waterton, the final S&M holdout until it collapsed in 1910. A little tram was found here, and Flora has lightened everyone's day ever since. Beyond this, is a new extension to Ward Fell. Talks have been heavy that HVR tracks could be repurposed, but something about that line always shuts these talks down. At Kelstorp Road, the main line breaks south onto another S&M main line. With only two stations, the Kirk Ronan branch is one of the quietest on the railway. Most of the time, running without a dedicated engine. Heading along this branch, the middle station of Rolf's Castle stands imposing above the river and the railway. The line terminates at Kirk Ronan, a cozy little town with a thriving harbour industry. The Peel Gondrat branch line the other quietest branch, as it is run almost entirely by electric engines, with only one steam engine standing by in the rare case of a power outage. And tie the Kildane or Kronk. Going north will take you to Abbey, a junction to the HVR remains, though much like at Ward Fell, no engine has dared to traverse it. Continuing on, the railway, the line arrives at another defunct railway, the Coldy Fell. A viaduct stands over the branch line, though it hasn't been serviced in years. Tourists walk along the overgrown rack rails, but not a soul who knows of the disaster that took place at the turn of the century. Crossing a river created by a mighty dam, the branch terminates at the walled city of Peel Gondred. It tunnels underneath 
Bradford City to a mighty aluminium and iron works. One of the most popular branches, the Wellsworth branch, follows the old WNS to a T, without many differences. Starting at Wellsworth, it moves southeast and so does capital city, Suttery. The WNS's Folly Harbour can be seen, though it hasn't been touched in a century. Moving further south, curving along the peninsula, the line terminates at Brendam, a bustling port. Ships from many places come, including shipments of logs from the nearby Misty Island. By far the most recognizable or branch line, the Farquhar needs no introduction. Services start at Tidmouth, but diverge from the main at Napa Junction. It curves over the goods line to dry off, where a small airfield is serviced. The goods and main connect a toy wreck, though Thomas very rarely stops here. Moving northeast, you eventually arrive at Ellsbridge, crossing the beautiful River Ells. Up into the hills, there is the kindly halt, just before the tunnel to Hackenbeck, and beyond this town, is Farquhar. Going further north will take you to the Enofa Quarry, but going east will take you to Ulfston. We'll come back to this later. The Little Western, Sodor's tourist trap, as some of the engines may call it, though the Arlsberg is nothing to sneeze at. The line begins at Tidmouth, and shoots north into a picturesque cliff face tunnel before arriving at Hall Troll. Beyond this, the seaside resort town of Arlesboro West. Though the main ends here, the tracks don't end, continuing on to the Harwick extension. The Harwick branch was created in 1970 following a busy travel season on the roads. Bertie broke down too many times to count, and Bulgy was no help at all, even as a vegetable bus. It jetties off the Little Western and Arlesboro West and continues north. It passes through Callan, then Bluffs Cove, and finally Callandale. Upon reaching Harwick, the line loops back on itself returning to Arlesboro West. Also beginning at Arlesboro West, the Arlesdale Miniature Railway follows the mid solar track bed. It races along through Arlesboro Bridge Street and up to Farquhar Road, calling at the nearby ballast mine. Heading up to Marthwaite, it connects to another mine, though this one is almost dry. It continues to Arlesdale Green, past the MSR's or sheds, before deviating to Arlesdale, where it terminates. Sodor's oldest railway, the Scarlowy, hardly needs an introduction. From the beauty and tranquility of the forest, to the calming lakes and the busy quarries, the Scarlowy has it all. It starts at Crovens Gate in a large loop. Going southwest will take you to Balladwale, though usually only goods take this route. Following the loop northeast, you eventually arrive at Crosney Kern. There's a junction here to an old quarry, but Rusty never likes to think about that day. The line scurries up to Glenock, where a tunnel waits before Renius. Duncan got stuck here once. Another loop awaits at this station. Going north takes you to Lakeside, and south goes to Scarlowy. There are several more junctions and mines, but many of them are closed now. A railway that most would never have dreamed of, the Mid-Sodor, 
made its grand return with an extension in the late 1990s, connecting the most legendary railways of the island. The line begins at Lakeside, curving through valleys and past the peak at Shanduini. If you look below, the Harwin Valley Railway can be seen, though you'll be hard pressed to remember. A long time dream of the original Midsodor was to connect to the Coldy Fell Railway, and though the latter folded a century ago, the new line per passes Kirk Mashan, dressed up as a what might have been. The line splits here, heading north takes you to the original terminus at King Ori's Bridge in Peel Gondred, while the south steams along to Balamodi, where the line reconnects. From here, it follows its original trackbed, past Ulfstead Road and Casney Harwin, twisting and turning through ancient tunnels and over spectacular views. The railway halts at Arlesdale Green, and many a story is told between the old and the new. Our final subject is a purely tourist line, the Ulfstead Estate Railway. It only has one official stop, but it is tied into the Northwestern quite significantly. Envisioned in 1970 as a way for Sir Robert Norley to give his collection a run, it is made up of two loops. There is a small one around Ulfstead Estate, where weaker and smaller engines like Stephen and Glynn can pull tours, and a much larger one for his high-speed engines to stretch their wheels. The line connects to the northwestern main line between Kronk and Marin, allowing passengers to come from the mainland or Tidmouth without the need to stop. It also connects to the narrow gauge circuit via the Mid-Sodor Heritage Railway, and most of the northern line is dual gauge allowing Millie to visit her friends at any time. There is additionally a connection at Farquhar, allowing people of Thomas's branch to see these wonders of steam at any time. And that is all for this wonderfully massive map. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I will try to answer them either as a comment or with a dedicated video in future. Until next time, this has been Rebecca of Sudrian Shenanigans signing out, and I'll see you next time. Farewell! Hello everyone! If you liked this video, please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you next time!